Hello everyone, my name is Konstantin Taranov, and today I'd like to present DAOs, which is our communication library for Java Virtual Machines, which empowers applications to send objects serialization-free and with employing RDMA network. But before talking about DAOs, I'd like to explain how we send objects in Java right now. Let's consider an example when we send an object of a class person between two applications. So the sender applications application would need to first allocate memory uh, for sending an object. So it would be a send buffer. Then we would need to employ one of the serialization libraries to convert our object into byte format and write it to this buffer. Finally, we would be able to send this buffer over the network. The receiver would perform similar steps. It would need to allocate a receive buffer, then it would read this byte stream from the network to this buffer, and then it would perform deserialization, which is the process of reading this byte stream and record extracting the send object. As you can see, such a simple task as sending one object entails so many steps. And the or reason for this is this uh, Java is a managed language uh, which does not provide us access to the memory. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, these objects in memory, they have a different structure than we expect. First of all, for the particular example of class person, this object would be not contiguous and contain of two objects. So we would have this person and then we would have this another object which responds to the char array. In addition, inside of the heap, we would have some GVM specific information like class descriptors or some metadata which is only understood inside of the local JVM. So what this serialization library do, uh, they extract all the meaningful information and convert it to a byte stream which would be a portable. So in case of Java serialization format, it would be a name of the class. Creo could also perform some additional optimizations. It could perform type registration. So we could replace the names of the class with just single integer. You may think that this is quite simple operation. So we need to just jump in the memory, find all the objects we need to send and perform some simple transformations. But actually such simple steps, they actually consume a lot of CPU cycles. To illustrate that, let's consider the following example. So we'd like to send objects from one JVM to another, and we send more than one million objects. And in case of one gigabit interconnect, we would spend the same portion of time for serialization, for network, and for deserialization. However, once the network getting faster and faster, the time we spend on network is actually becomes less than 1%, and then 99% of the time we spend on the this serialization and deserialization, which is our real bottleneck right now in the communication. For this reason, we implemented NOWS. This is our serialization-free networking library. What it essentially does, it empowers connections to send objects directly without the need to use serialization libraries. So it adds the following interface to the network connection. As a connection, it can be a TCP connection or it can be an RDMA connection, which is a wrapper over InfiniBand IP verbs. So when we talk that we perform this without uh, serialization, it means that we send the object in the same format as it's stored into, in the memory of the sender. So we would just, without data transformation, take the object from the heap without intermediate buffering, we would send it to the, uh, to the remote side and write it with RDMA to the remote heap. So as you can see, we could actually perform sending without uh, need to transform the objects. But ho however, we send the object as they're stored in the local heap. So it means we would send some fields which would be invalid on the receiving side. So this is one of the core challenging of uh, our project. Another challenges are related to garbage collection. 
So garbage collector can concurrently touch and move objects while we're touching them in GVM. In addition, RDMA-capable devices, they can also bypass the CPU and concurrently access the memory, which makes the issues in, in, uh, in the way we try to send uh, the objects. However, we designed a series of algorithms, tricks, and approaches that would allow us to safely send objects between JVMs and do it efficiently. So when applications try to send the object, it would perform this graph reversal, so we would try to understand what we sent, and that would create our send list. So this is uh, memory blocks that we send from our local heap to the remote one. And plus, we would generate special metadata, which would be understood by the receiver, which would allow it to fix all these invalid fields that I mentioned before. We would send these objects using RDMA, if we use RDMA in our, as our basic connection, and then we would write these objects directly to the remote heap using RDMA write. Once the receiver would receive all the required data, it could start performing this pointer fixing. So it would use algorithms which would fix these field pointers and class pointers, which were taken as it is from the center side. So right now, like focus only on this uh, object pointer. So as you remember from this person example, we had this field name, which is of course is just a normal C pointer, which would be invalid on the receiving side. To explain how we efficiently recover this on the receiving side, I'd like to uh, consider the following small abstract example. Let's assume that we would like to send an object A, but it has two references to, to another objects B and D, which both have a common reference to object C, which has a back reference to A. So overall, we need to send for objects and uh, also uh, be able to fix all these references on the receiving side. So the core idea of our algorithm, we would traverse object in DFS order on both the sender and the receiver. And since we, we fix the way we uh, traverse these references, we could perform some compression on the, on the metadata we need to send. So in the particular case, these uh, references would be visited in the following order. Of course, in the sender memory, the objects can be in any part and uh, they could be not ordered in the DFS order. So importantly, we split our pointers into two categories. So we first have trivial pointers, which are pointers one, two, and three. This is the pointers which points to objects for the first time. So the pointers one, two, and three, they were like new pointers when we did DFS reversal. But the pointers four and five, there were extra pointers to already visited object when we did DFS traversal. So the key idea of the algorithm, we would send the objects in the same order as we visited them in DFS order. So we would send A, B, C, and D. And then we could send information only about these back pointers. So in fact, in most of the data structure and most of the workloads, we don't have back pointers at all. So we would just send the object uh, the objects and we would say zero metadata information. But for this example, we, we send this extra uh, information that we have pointer uh, four and five that were back pointers. So the receiver, the receiver would receive the objects in this order, A, B, C, and D, and then it could start fixing the pointer. So it first would visit A, there would be a reference, and that would have a number one. So uh, in the we enumerate all the reference we do in DFS reversal, and then it would be reference number one, and it's not in the list of our back pointer, so it means it should point to the next element in our list. Then the next pointer would be found at B, and then again, pointer number two is not in the list of back pointers, it means it points to C. Then we had another pointer in our DFS order, it was from A to D. Uh, from A, so it's number three, it's again in the list, it means it should point next element in our list. 
And then for the pointers four and five, we would use this metadata and we see that pointer four should point to the offset 20 and uh, pointer five should point to the offset zero. As you can see, these pointers, they point back in memory. That's why we call them back pointers. And then we could efficiently recover all the pointers with a linear scan. And through the network, we need only send information about the back pointers. This is the core idea of our algorithm. Of course, we use other structures and other algorithms to make it more efficient. And then also we explained in the paper how we recover class pointers. So please read the full paper to understand how we do that. Now I'd like to just briefly explain how we do RDMA networking. So as already mentioned, we, when we send the object, we try to understand what we need to send. So the sender would use silent RDMA writes, and then it would send all this heap memory to the remote heap. So that would happen silently for the receiver, and it will not be aware that something was written to its heap. So it writes to special pre-located region. Then the sender would write the metadata write, which indicates that the message was completely written. And then once the sender gets the acknowledgement about this write, it can return. And uh, the sender can continue in its execution. The receiver would have this object in memory and it would be safely stored. So we, in the paper, we explained how we make it safe. So the garbage collector do not touch our received objects. So at some point, the receiver would call read object, and then it would perform this pointer fixing, which would fix the pointers and materialize the received object. Then the application would get a pointer to the first received object. So of course, we uh, had an example when the receiver could receive the message. In the paper, we explain more complicated cases when the receiver uh, has uh, little memory for receiving the object and the case when it was not ready to receive. So please read the full paper to understand all the corner cases of our probe. Now I'd like to go to the evaluation and just to focus on the key results. So first, we uh, evaluated the latency of sending array of floats, which is quite simple but important uh, data type. Of course, in the paper, we show more complex uh, data types. Please read and uh, please read the full paper to, to get the insights and sending such uh, complex uh, data structure. But for this, we just send the array of loads. And what I'd like to show that in case of the RDMA networking, NAOS can achieve latency of only eight microseconds. So NAOS can enable low latency communication in RDMA, uh, in Java applications. So uh, as you can see, it could beat all existing uh, serialization library, even over RDMA uh, networks. For the throughput case, when we did our first uh, initial uh, experiments, our RDMA implementation of NAOS could only achieve 250,000 requests per second, which was one third of the speed of Java and Creo. And the core reason for this was that we implemented only blocking communication. But as you know, RDMA by the nature was designed to be synchronous uh, communication primitives. So that's why we implemented a synchronous communication in, uh, in NAOS. And this way, we could unlock uh, throughput. So uh, at the beginning, we were just limited by the latency. And now we could use full bandwidth of our communicator. And then we could achieve 1.5 million requests per second, which shows the actual the need and requirements for synchronous communication in Java applications. Uh, you could read more about how we made it safe, how we actually protect the memory in the paper. I also invite you to download the source code and try uh, the nows yourself. If you have questions, please contact using the mail you can see on the screen. Thank you for your attention.